Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. I know it's a bit earlier for my uh, normal viewers. I am actually on the East Coast and of course it snowed. So I woke up and got to shovel. Yay! Anyway, I'm here. I'm kind of following up on last week's post about why we hate tasting notes. And I thought, well, you know what? That was kind of harsh. Like there's loads of people who take joy in tasting notes and it is probably, you know, very much part of wine itself. So although I truly believe that it is important to just taste wine and enjoy wine, there definitely is a place in the wine world for tasting notes. And I think that it leads to a lot of anxiety for people, uh, you know, and uh, going back to the science of it, people trust themselves to do certain things. But whenever it comes to wine and they're new to the wine world, they're always kind of, I think I taste blueberry when they've tasted blueberry before. So they know that that is blueberry, but there's something about being in that wine world that makes them a little anxious. So with that being said, what I thought was I would break down tasting notes into making it a very simple concept so that you can gain a little confidence in your wine tasting skills, okay? So it really, we don't need to break it down into its nano components in order to taste wine and to give what we get on our palate and in our nose of what we have on a wine tasting thing, okay? So let's break it down simple, right? Wine in its most basic form, three categories, rosé, white wine, and red wine. Yes, there's orange wine, but technically that's a white wine, okay? It's just white wine made on skins. A rosé is red wine on skins. So those are the three main categories, right? Everybody can handle three main categories. Now let's talk about color. Again, three categories. Rosé, is it pink? Is it salmon or is it orange? I'm pretty sure everybody can handle which of those colors it is. White wines. Is it kind of a lemony green? Does it have a green hue to it? Is it lemon or is it gold? Okay, nice and simple. And then with the red wine, is it purple, ruby, or garnet? Okay, so I get it. I actually would eliminate that garnet and just say, is it purple or ruby? Because ruby and garnet is a little close to each other. So I'm going to take that and let's just break it down into two. Is it purple or is it a reddish color? Okay, that's all that's good. Now, if we move on to the aromatics of the wine, okay, moving on to the aromatics and the flavors of the wine, these categories can be very simply broken down again. Now, the rosé, we're going to throw that into the red wine because those are the flavors and aromatics that you're typically, typically going to get because, like I said, a rosé wine is made from red grapes. So, four categories, okay? White wine. Is it a citrus? Because it tastes like lemon, right? Everybody knows what lemon is. Citrus flavors. Is it a green fruit? Think of an apple, a green apple, okay? Is it a stone fruit, a peach, a plum? Or is it tropical fruit, okay? Four categories. Everybody knows a citrus. Everybody knows a green fruit. Everybody knows a stone fruit. And everybody knows a tropical fruit. Just put it into those categories. No need to get specific. Okay. And then the red wine, is it black fruit, blue fruit, or red fruit? Okay. No need to break it down. Oh, I get cherry. I get this. It's a red fruit. Okay. Red fruit, black fruit, or blue fruit. Now, some of the wines can also in those flavors and aromatic, uh, aromatics can give off flower scents. No need to get all worried about that. There are basic uh, flower aromatics and flavors that come into wine tasting. Roses, geranium, blossoms, white flowers, lavender, and violet. Everybody knows those, right? So simple. Let's just keep things going simple. If you're not familiar with any of those flowers, probably geranium, I think, is probably the least popular to people to know. Get yourself to your local plant store and smell a geranium. You'll always remember it, okay? And now, 
that's fine. You're done. You've done tasting notes. You're absolutely done, right? There's no need to go any further than that. But if you feel you want to dive deeper, we still don't need to make it difficult, okay? People often talk about sweetness levels. Is it dry or is it sweet, okay? Now, there are there is a little bit of confusion in this because fruits can taste sweet. You can have a very big in your face fruit bomb of let's say a Zinfandel and you're going to say, "Oh, that's sweet." When it's actually a dry wine. Remember dryness, that sweetness level comes from how much sugar the yeast are eating, okay, before they die off. So the trick to knowing if a wine is sweet or dry, if you taste it and you think it's sweet, pinch your nose, taste again. If it still tastes sweet with your nose pinched, it's a sweet wine. If it no longer tastes sweet with your nose pinched, it's a dry wine. Okay, acid. Acid is determined on the sides of your tongue. Okay, so simple. Doesn't make you salivate. If it does, it's high acidity. If it doesn't, it's low acidity piece of cake. Tannins, once again, low or high. Tannins is that drying sensation and you're going to sense it on your gums. So all you need to do, take your sip of wine, swish it around a little bit. And if your gums feel a little bit dry, like a little fine sandpapery, call it low tannin. If your gums feel really dry and you know, you're like sticking on your gums, then it's high tannins. So simple. Body. This one's a piece of cake. If it, put it on your mouth. If it reminds you of skim milk or fat-free milk, then it is light-bodied. If it tastes like whole milk, then it's full-bodied. Can't get easier than that to be a descriptor. And then the finish, right? Is it short or is it long? Okay, again, this is probably the most objective uh, I'm sorry, subjective one, because what's short to me might be long to you. But basically speaking, if you swallow the wine and the flavors go away when you swallow it, call it short. If you swallow the wine and you're like, oh, wow, I can still sort of taste that wine, okay, then it is a long finish. So piece of cake. So that's all there is to it. Super simple wine tasting notes. Be confident in it, right? Don't feel obligated to get all the way down to the nitty gritty. I mean, I know there's people out there that can, you know, say, oh, this is a Granny Smith apple or this is a, you know, baking apple or blah, blah. I don't even know different types of apples, right? You don't need to go that far. You can say, you know, it tastes like an apple. No need to get into it, okay? So save this post okay save this live so you can make maybe your own little you know spreadsheet of what to taste with it but those are the basic ways to taste and anybody can do that because everybody is familiar with it and just remember the number one tip to tasting wine is just enjoy it but if you feel you want to go further no need to go down that big long tasting sheet just Light bodied, full bodied. Is it, is it citrus fruit or is it tropical fruit? Okay, super simple. Think about the things you're comfortable with and compare the wine to that if you feel obligated to do tasting notes. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that this gives you some nice basic wine tasting information. And like I said, please double click that heart so that you like it. Hit that little flaggy thingamajiggy so that you can save it and you can create your own tasting sheet. And I just hope you have a great Tuesday. If you're in an area that it is cold, stay warm. And I will see you next week. Please leave me a comment of what you think about tasting notes and the complexity of it or the simplicity of it. And if there is anything you would like me to cover in the future. Have a great Tuesday. Slancha.